Yo, my bad, bro. No, you good, brother. How you? I'm good, man. What's happening with you? Uh, man, another day in quarantine, brother. Another day in quarantine. No doubt, man. So I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Uh, this is the Make It Place Convo. So we're just going to be talking about like all the plays that you were making before yep. Corona, what you're doing now, and what you're going to do once everything goes back to normal. It's so sure. crazy. I, I was thinking about the last time I saw you. I think it was like 2010. And you came through to the Pearl Bistro and Bar. Yeah. I forget what song you was working, but I remember I was playing it in a mix show. Uh, yeah. I just, I couldn't remember the name of the song, but it was a fun, it was a fun night, man. I think that was the last time I saw you was like. That's, that's a, that's a decade ago, brother. You know what yeah, I'm saying? But no. we've, we've come a long way, man. And I appreciate you. And I'm proud of everything that you've accomplished too, King. Man, likewise, bro. Likewise, man. How are you and your people doing? First and foremost, I always like. Hey, listen, that. listen. Everybody's COVID free, man. Um, I, I, uh, I had a few homies that have had the COVID nineteen, but they've all pulled wow. through. Glory be to God. Shout out to Miami Mike. Shout out to Brandon Williams. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's a serious thing. You know, a lot of people not taking it as, as seriously to me as they should. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm. My heart and my condolences go to anyone that lost someone directly or indirectly but uh as far as my me and my tribe we're good man you know and I'm, I'm blessed to still be safe you know i was on tour when all this stuff started to pop off touching yeah. millions and thousands of women you know what i'm saying like you know night night after night so i'm happy that i'm healthy I'm yeah I'm absolutely healthy. man it seemed like you came into 2020 just with a new focus and, and, and a fire I me mean, he was doing the press runs obviously he was on the tour what was yep. your mindset going into the year it was the same as everybody else's, man. 2020 was the year of clear vision, the thing, uh, the year of alignment, you know. And unfortunately, you know, I, I'm not going to say unfortunately. Let me say this. I found peace in this season of uh, stillness. Yeah. Um, I feel like God is still the equalizer. God is very much in control. So, you know, uh, I, I, if anything, my heart goes to anyone who's not financially able to withstand or, or withdo the storm. And those who have lost lives and souls of that. But as far as me, man, I've been as busy as I've ever been in my life. You know what I mean? I see you, bro. I see yeah. you. Like, I'm proud of, uh, of you for so many levels, but particularly just how you're using this time to create, to grow, to yes, inspire, sir. and to connect. I feel like we're learning things about you that we yeah. never knew. Yep, and, yep. And it's crazy because you've been in the public eye for so long, but for two decades now. Are there things that you're actually discovering about yourself during this time? Um, I think if there's one thing specifically that I am, uh, I, I, I knew it, but I really, really know it. I'm very, very intact with my intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As far as musically uh, concerns, I've always known I was one of the pioneers of true R&B. Right. I've always known I was about peace, light, and love, but I've been using a lot of this time to find peace with God because I, I believe in the idiom or the mantra, you know, control what you can't, or yeah. excuse me, control what you can and let God control what you can't. Mm -hmm. I, I read Bible plans every day. I read the word every day. I wake up sometimes in the odd hours of the morning. So yeah. really, I'm really just spiritually locked in, and I don't think anyone can detour me from that. Right. But, um, you know, I, I'm 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 excited to be able to simultaneously work my fifth album while creating my sixth album. Yeah. I'm excited to complete this book that I've had an idea in my mind since 2013. I'm excited to uh, be adding on scents to my candle line, and I'm excited to be in the preliminary works of my podcast. A lot of things that I wanted to tap into from an entrepreneur uh, standpoint, um, I have the time to do so. We always said we didn't have the luxury of time. Now we have time to really do everything that we said we didn't have time to do. So uh, I'm proud of myself for not using this time to just chill, kick back, and relax because I'm financially right. able. Hell no. Like, I feel like 2020 might be the under construction year, and then 2020, yeah. uh, 2021 is a year to really, really flourish. So um, I encourage everybody to utilize this time to tap into all the things that we thought we didn't have time to do. Absolutely. I tell people all the time that it's going to be the people that who, are, who have adjusted and yep. use this time wisely are the ones who are going to thrive in the new normal because yes, sir. there's going to be a new normal, whether people want to admit it or not. And if you're not used to it or you're not prepared to change or pivot, then you're going to get lost in the sauce. So I commend you for that, bro. Very much let's, so. let's, talk about, let's talk about the new album you got coming up, man, such as like uh, that friend zone you dropped a couple of weeks ago. And it's, yeah. it's crazy because I feel like 
most, if not every guy, can relate to that song because we've all been in the friend zone at a yeah. certain point in time. <laughs> uh, everybody. I know everybody. myself, not, not excluded, I've been in the friend zone a couple times. But were you talking about a specific incident or just a collection of experiences? No, that's a real life situation, and she knows who she is. I would never like say a name or nothing like that to make it hot. But um, I, I believe, like you just said, men, women, I don't care how 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 popping you are, we've all been put in the friend zone. For me, it was like a mutual thing. There's always been a admiration, adoration for a certain individual. But um, I was always a show that she would cry on to uh, cope and get through, and vice versa. Right. And uh, as we we're well over a decade in of pure friendship, ah. we've never stepped the boundaries from a romantic standpoint, mm -hmm. across that line. And uh, I think it's the fear of not being able to replenish the purity that we have as best friends. You know, sometimes it's best, to, I don't care how attractive she is or how attractive she thinks I am, sometimes it's just good to not exercise that what if. Because right. what if it doesn't work? You gotta think of right. the negative also. And True. if it doesn't work, you'll never be able to go back to how it used to be. And I knew, you know, sometimes it's not mutual. Sometimes the man steps out of bounds and it throws the woman off. And now she's like, well, I don't feel the same way romantically. So now I feel away. Um, I knew it was a relatable record. I'm all about R&B that connects and that uh, impacts the spirits, not just the ears. Like the ears is just a listening session. But yeah. if I can impact your spirit, if I can impact your soul, I think that's what makes me longevity and, and everlasting. So... Everyone's been friend zone, whether it was mutual yeah. or not. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was uh, eye to eye or not. So I thought that would be a good segue to guide people to the Such Is Life album because I created yeah. this for everybody that said they miss '90s R&B, they miss the yeah. substance, they miss transparency, they miss yeah. vulnerability. That's what friend zone is. We've all been friend zone for the yeah. for the for the for the positive or the negative of the relationship. So it was a real life experiences uh, experience, and I write from everything that I've lived because there's somebody out there that needs like right. a soundtrack to their lives. It's so funny that you talk about people missing that, that old style of R and B and you re-release Sammy. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, shout out to Dallas Austin for doing that for me. Right. I was about to say how that come about, but that, that, that's pretty, that's pretty dope. And what, what we're seeing right now is like from an analytical standpoint, cause Pandora, we're always looking at trends and, and what's happening. What we've seen since the pandemic started is there's an increase in R&B streaming during yep. this time. And yep. you talked about how r and for the spirit. Why do you think during this particular time more people are streaming R&B music? I'm going to tell you why. So hip-hop is the number one genre of music in right. the world. Yep. But hip-hop, uh, unfortunately, degrades women. It talks about popping bottles and, and, and being wealthy, cars, clothes, materialistic things, those, that, those things that bring, like, temporary uh, uh, gratification. Mm. No one's popping bottles right now because clubs are closed, right? <laughs> no one's standing on couches. No one's buying jewelry. That should be the last investment that you're doing right now, right, during the pandemic. So, like, this is a time where you need love. This is the time where you need honesty. This is the time where you need transparency. That's R&B. That's soul music. And it goes to show you how uh, pivotal and how important R&B music is. I don't care what you listen to. If you don't have R&B in your life, you're incomplete. And now we have the time to sit down and listen. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not at a fast paced life to where we can just skim through. No, you really have to sit down with yourself, address yourself, look at yourself in the mirror, think back on that ex or think back on that relationship that you invested and it didn't work out for whatever reason. And that's what R&B always was supposed to be about. And that's what I've never strayed away from. I've always yeah. stayed true to the core of R&B music and life is full circle, man. I want everyone want to understand, like, as long as you stay true to yourself, there will be a season in time where you can, like, really, really prosper. And that's why I'm, like, popping at this, at this point of our lives is because I never left soul. I never left passion. I never left honesty. I, le I never left uh, transparency. Even in my flaws, I don't try to sell just, like, the awesome Sammy. I grow right. up and make mistakes in front of you all. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that's what such as life is about. It's about rolling with the punches. It's about in spite of the negative that you've endured, you're able to uh, react in a positive way and become a better person. And yeah. that's, what, that's what this album is about. It's about healing, man. I think when you hear this album on June 5th, um, shameless plug, you're going to yeah. be able to really, really... Nah, plug your stuff, plug your stuff. <laughs> you're going to... Actually... J1, you're going to... 
Yeah, you're gonna be you gonna you're gonna be able to really, really it's gonna take you back to when Tank and Joe and John yeah. B and Brian McKnight and one twelve and Jagged Edge was giving you those vibrations. That's what I create. That's soul music. So full transparency, I've actually heard a lot of the, the project because obviously I work at a streaming platform so we can yes, sir. up early so we can listen to it and know where the playlist is at. Yes, sir. And it's really exactly what you said. I feel like it's very it's well balanced. You got some baby making music on there, yep. but yep. you also got some real music. Like I like that song "Peace," where you're talking about hey. you know men that men want to settle down too. There's actually yeah. men that want like a real relationship and not have just meaningless sex, like you say in in, in the track. Yep. So yes, sir. Uh, but then you got the nasty song. You got the halfway song. Yes, sir. And, and I, I think it's a a great body of work, and I'm glad you're still gonna drop it in June. Now the next single is Picky, right? Yeah, we Ro dropped Timmy. Picky uh, May fifth. Me, okay. me and my bro Ro Timmy. Yep. Um, Y'all know him as Dre from yeah. uh, Power, you know what I'm saying? But he's been doing music for a long time. He just took off in the acting world. But his music, if y'all haven't checked out any of Ro Timmy's projects, he's amazing. Amazing talent, yes. amazing vocalist, songwriter, singer. Uh, that's my bro from Another Mother. And um, I just want to give y'all music that can last 10, 15, 20, maybe, you know, an, an everlasting amount of time. Right. And um, since I'm Indian, I have an amazing partnership with Ghazi and Nima and Tina Davis at Empire. I'm at the luxury of creating what I want to, not for the DJs, not for the strip clubs. Mm -hmm. I don't got to worry about the PDs. It's my freedom of expression. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I do music for myself first. It's like my therapeutic release, mm. right? And I just pray that it resonates with the souls of the masses. So like I do it to heal myself first and then I pray that it resonates with you all. So uh, we're, we're, we're releasing Picky uh, on May fifth, and I can't I can't right. wait to, to to see how everyone takes to that because they love Friend Zone, and yeah. I have a plethora of hit records like in the chamber that I'm I can't wait to let out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got you got a drink. If I could talk about it with Tank on there too. Hey, big bro, Tank. Yeah, let it big out. Let it out. That, that joint is fire. So no, we're definitely excited about the project, and no cap, this is coming from me actually hearing it. Thank it's you. It's definitely going to be a good soundtrack for the summer. Especially I didn't even know you was hip. Like I knew you was in the loop, but I didn't know you heard everything. That's love. So, so, so bro, yeah, man, just being on this side, as far as streaming, I get to hear so much music, and especially before it comes out. So yeah. I like to, you know, especially shout out to Empire, shout out to Ghazi. They're real good about letting the curators hear the project before it actually drops so we know what the playlist. So I yeah. had a chance to go through the majority of it. I'm going to go back and listen again, but... It's a great body of work, bro. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, King. Thank you. Nah, no doubt, man. And uh, so this next project that you got coming up, I know you said that you actually have your fans are are A and R in it right yep. now. Yeah, yeah. Let I, me let me ask you this: like, what's that experience been like? Has anybody said to you, "Nah, Sammy, that's not it. You need to go back and redo that one." No, 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 no. I've been, I've been. Um, so, so because I followed them since my comeback from a mainstream standpoint, standpoint right? right? Um, they brought me back. No, no A right. and R, no label. I had meetings with every publishing company because I was really okay with just being a songwriter four years ago. I was I was ghostwriting for a lot of artists that people jammed to, right? Right. Um, and I can't speak on what I co you know ghostwritten for people because I was a ghost. But <laughs> right. I was like, I'm gonna change R and B from a penmanship standpoint. Mm. Uh, I went viral, four million views in a day with the I'm Him record via the Shade Room. I will forever be indebted to them for giving me their platform. It yeah. brought me back. It, it put me on the Savage Tour with Tank. It gave me a sold out tour with Everlasting. You know, before the COVID, I was on the Millennium Tour 2020. These are all things that just happened for me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I was just down bad four years ago. Now I'm way up. And that's because of God, His grace, His mercy, and the Sammy Loves of the world. Right. And the Shade Room giving me that platform. Um, I really, really follow my fans. So what I decided to do with Sunsets, my sixth studio album, although I'm working in promoting such as life, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm quarantined in. Let me let them watch the writing process. Yeah. While I'm in my room at the very desk that all these hits they sing to, 20,000 sold out, let me let them see the process. Let me play the record for them two or three times on live. And they're telling me, like, that's the one. Oh, I love this. Oh, I need yeah, this. Oh, I play yeah. this. And it's, just a, it's, it's a little experiment. It's like my baby. Like, I don't know if it's going to work. You know, right. hopefully I can release in December. But because I don't play the politics game, why not give my fans a all-access pass to my creative process and we create this album together? Smart. They're the ones that buy it. They're the ones that made me Sammy. 
Right. Let them pick the songs. Let them see the process. And it's been a beautiful thing. They're asking for records that won't be out until six months from now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I've dedicated, bro, 20 years, almost 21 years to R&B music. I can't, you know, and I humbly say this, but I can't fail that music, bro. When it comes to R&B, I don't care if you play an Usher album, and that's my idol. Put, right. it, up, put it up against my album. Mm. Trey Songz, Chris Brown, whoever you want to name. I humbly say, please play his project top to bottom. Play mine top to bottom, note for note, song to song, content to content. They got to see me. And I know I know internally they mean that. And I, I know right. internally they know that. So yeah. I'm not intimidated by nothing. I'm, I've been as confident as I've ever been. I write my own songs. I pick my own beats. I sequence myself. I vocal arrange myself. I don't have millions of dollars behind me. I'll take a little bit, and I'll make that a million. That's how I, that's how I rock. That sounds like... That sounds like a versus challenge right there, man. We need we need Sammy on the verse. <laughs> yeah, man. listen, listen. I, what's up? They, they tried to they tried to pair me and Mario and and me and Trey and we we just when I say we're not in the same league in the same system, mm. I'm a supporter of all of them, but I know their lives, I know their careers. No one has overcome what I've overcome. Mm. People know Sammy and they think I've been like major my whole life, bro. I've only been major ten percent of my career. Mm. Yeah, but I have a number one. I have a top three. I have a number five. This is Billboard. So yeah. what I'm doing independently, I don't even like to be compared to nobody because no one had the same walk as I did. No one had to come over losing everything back in 2009 with an ex manager that I trusted as a big brother like I did. So yeah. I went through label changes. I've been through management changes. Trey's been on Atlantic since he came in the game. Mm -hmm. Breezy's been on Jive, you know what I'm saying, and all that since he came in the game. Me, I had to overcome things and prove myself time and time again when I have over 130, 50 million streams independently. I don't, you know, there's systems. I don't want to give too much of the game away. You can buy packages where your streams look like this, but it's not that. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware or of all your that. Views, <laughs> your views, I'm not saying they do that, but yeah. I don't have none of that. Any numbers you pull up, those are my organic numbers. So I'm me, Sammy, the entity, the the brand. It's it's a one of a kind ordeal because I don't play those games. Right. Why would I pay for a hundred million views and really half of those is robots? Mm. I love humans. I love spirits. I love you know what I mean. Yeah. And that's what I create for. So I don't really see anybody else. I just focus on what I'm doing in my path. Amen to that, man. And you're definitely doing a lot outside of music. You got the candle line. Doing yeah, movies, got the mile yeah. joint popping off. Yeah. What yeah. else you working on? <laughs> Man, I got a, I got the candle line right. So uh, we launched my candle line. Um, I'm in partnership with Pop and Pearl Candle dot com. We did Pure Love and Pure Honey in February and made a killing, man. And everyone who's purchased a candle, thank you. I'm really a candle lover, so it kind of made sense to like create a fragrance or a scent, if you will, to right. go along with the playlist of my music. Um, yesterday, I spent six long hours creating three more fragrances. We have uh, or scents rather, peace indigo and all night okay um if you buy peace and all night and you buy a physical copy or itunes google play you get those indigo is added to the sammy collection um i shot a pilot for this show called misunderstood in la the end of last year mm -hmm. uh, uh i'm working on a book i have a meeting tomorrow for good to know which pretty much lets women in the inside of a man's mind i don't think like steve harvey does i don't think a woman should think like a man i don't think a man so right. I think like a, a woman, I think we should figure out the happy median and understand just how different we are. Mm -hmm. So um, where's the next Diddy? Where's the next Jay-Z? Where's the next Nipsey Hussle? Where's the next person that's big on ownership, building it from the ground up, little by little, plant by plant, water by water, seed by seed? That's me. My music right. was like that. I've never had like 500,000 first week sales, but I have platinum records on my wall, gold records on my wall. So I'm all about the journey is the destination, the slow grind. So everything I put my attention and energy into, I treat it like it's my music. So I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And now that the music is on an autopilot and I make a such an amount, a certain amount, excuse me, uh, every year, I can now diversify myself and master another craft. And I want to be the next that. That's awesome, bro. Keep doing what you're doing because like, it's, it's, a good, it's a good roadmap for what other artists should be doing. You know, yeah. especially in a time like this, I think a lot of artists are learning that Bro. I can't just rely on my streaming money. I just can't nope. rely on my publishing check. And I definitely can't rely on those shows because yeah. as you can see, shows can get taken away. 
Yeah, one, one, I put, they had multiple streams. Of I'm very transparent with my fans, right? I put up on social media the other day, I got like a payout for like 11 bands. I put myself 30,000 in the hole in, in Jan uh, excuse me, December of last year. Mm. Between personal, Christmas, I do for my family and my career, right? Because I'm still independent. Right. So you have to put yourself in the red and then believe in yourself that you'll come out of it. But now I have residual income where every month without me leaving the crib, I got five figures coming in. I yeah. just wake up to that. Yeah. But I know I did the analytics. I, I studied the stats. I studied the streams. Like a lot of artists just be freestyling. Not me. I study this shit to a core. Yeah. You can't call yourself, forget being a boss. You can't call yourself a leader if everyone around you is starving. That's right. If I'm the only one eating steak, lobster, and shrimp, and my niggas is eating ramen noodles, that's a problem. If my mom's is stressing, that's a problem. If my siblings are stressing, that's a problem. So I don't live for myself at this point. I've already written a bins. I bought my first crib when I was 20. I don't care nothing about materialistic things. Mm -hmm. I care about legacy. I care about generational wealth, things that they don't teach the urban. Let me not uh, milk it black people. They don't teach us that. Right. This is me. You know, I'm 33. Yeah. Let me do it while I'm in my prime. Let me do it while, before I'm 50, before I'm 60. People are not going to listen when I'm that old. I'm an old head, right? No, nah, I'm in the middle child. Right. I'm right between the millennials, and I was raised in a traditional standpoint. Right. That's my stance in everything I take. So my story and my path and my purpose is so different from the people they compare me to. You can't compare me. I'm really one of a kind. You know what I mean? God uniquely wired me and, and positioned me to be in this position I'm in. And all I'm here to do is educate and spread peace, light, and love. So I definitely have diversified my portfolio. They say to be a millionaire, you need seven streams of income. Income, yeah. Yeah, I'm four in. I'm three away. There it is. And on four in, I'm almost there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I want to share the light to people that yeah. you can do it. If Sammy can do it, I'm just an ordinary man. Blessed to do extraordinary things. That's it. You said two very profound things. I hope people picked up on that. Passive income. Yep. They talk about that a lot in, in a book that I'm almost done with, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a great book. If, if, if Beautiful book. Read it. Beautiful book. Yeah. And, and just generational wealth. That's something yes, that sir. another thing that we need to talk to our people about. Um, as much as you've been through, bro, like you've had your highs, you had your lows. Very you know, much. You're still here. You're still standing. All glory to God. What advice would you give to other artists who are coming into this business who are either green to this stuff or just starting to see the stuff that you've already walked, went through? I mean, it's a lot. Um, first, I, I, I wouldn't. You know, I don't want to preach religion on any, anybody because I feel like religion causes segregation. If right. you're Baptist and I'm Church of Christ or that person's Seventh Day Adventist or that person's Pentecostal, we're all of one body. Mm -hmm. So I, I encourage everybody to get intact with the spiritual. There right. was never a time in my seven years of struggling, my mom wasn't able to help me, bro. My father wasn't. My 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 people that the big bros, producers that I really look up to that I thought could like propel me. They didn't come back for me, but God did. And, mm. and when I say come back, he never actually left me. If anything, I strayed away from him. So right. I would say have a spiritual foundation, bro, because that's so imperative and so essential to getting over these obstacles and barricades that everybody to some degree, shape, form, or fashion are going to go through. Um, and don't take no for an answer. I, mm. I've sat in front of executives and they pulled up the stash and was like, well, you did go platinum. And you did have a number one, and you did have a top ten, and you did write this for Tank, and you did, and they still didn't sign me. Right. Like they they named all my accolades, and still was like, but I don't know. I think your best days are behind you. Yeah. And if I was a weak minded person, I would have allowed that no, because that's a person of statue. That's an A and R that I respect. Told me no. I didn't let that shit detour me, bro. Like, I knew they just didn't see the vision, and that's no shade to them. God gave it to me. So my only duty was to make the vision come to light. And now they can little bro. And I knew you was going to be this. And can I get backstage passes to this? Yeah, because now I made you see it. So right. don't let somebody's no kill your dream. The moment you stop stepping forward, the moment you stop believing in yourself, you just killed yourself. That's, that's like a, a, a dream suicide. So I encourage everybody to get spiritually aligned and to yeah. never stop. Every day you wake up, bro, is another day to change your circumstances. I might have been broke yesterday, but then I hit the jackpot the day after. So your one moment, one yes, one viral video from, look at me. Yeah. I never thought my comeback was Shade Room. And I love the Shade Room. 
<laughs> the first time I heard I was on the shade room, I thought I was being shaded. I'm like, damn, what did I do? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It was just me singing in my dining room, four mortgages behind. But here I am running a whole entire empire where I employ seven, eight people. And I knew I would be here. And I'm not even content. Excuse me, I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. There's so much more I want to do. So the two things I can tell you, man, is to have a prayer life yep. that's unshakable and to never accept no one's no. It's what, what is no? I don't speak that language. I don't know how to spell it. I don't know what it means because it has to be a way. You feel yeah. me? Yep, absolutely, bro. I got your next stream of income. It needs to be motivational speaker. Because Someone said that last <laughs> night, so I'm going to take this as affirmation. For real. So, so that's <laughs> just you. confirmation if more yes. people are saying that. But yes, that needs to be another stream of income because you are definitely that. inspiring the people in the comments and you are inspiring me. I'm going to wrap it up here with these quarantine questions. What's the best thing you've watched so far during this time? Money heist. Money Everybody's heist. saying that. I got to get on that. Bro. So uh, you, you can watch it in Italian or Espanol or whatever the language they're speaking. I tried to do it in English and it wasn't vibing the same, but that okay. it was it was it was inspirational because I play chess, right? I don't like checkers. Checkers is just yeah. jump, jump, <laughs> jump right. me. I like to be five moves ahead. Yep. And the professor, I won't give it away, but there's a guy that's a character that's called the Professor Money Heist. He was always thinking for his team, the worst case, best case scenario. So from a mental stimulation uh, standpoint, Money Heist. Money Heist. Okay. I got to check that out. Is there anything you're reading right now? Yeah, I'm reading a plethora of books. The Power of Manifestation. Okay. I believe that what you speak, you become. Yep. Or it's reciprocated by the universe. Um, I'm reading uh, The Ways of the Superior Man. It helps you about money, wealth, and sex. Um, and then The Battlefield of the Mind, again. Because if you can't think clearly, then you can't function clearly because thoughts become things and things provoke action those are the three uh literature books that i would give to anyone to to, to dabble into okay okay is there any new foods that you've tried to cook absolutely not i hate cooking uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, staying away from the kitchen yeah 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 I, I i i just don't enjoy it i can cook i can make some single meal meal move um, uh little meals and survive but yeah. i have no enjoyment my sister though is a chef and my brother's also in culinary so i'll be making them spoil me oh you good there you good yeah. last question bro what's the first thing you're gonna do once all this is over and it's safe to go out not talking about today what they're doing in atlanta everybody just out in the streets with no mask on yeah we freestyling bad in the you don't have a mask on it's all bad off. it's all bad um because i don't know when the the the, the tour will start back up man I, I i've been wanting to vacate for a while Right. And the dream of mine has been go to, I want to go to Thailand, man. And I just want to become one with the universe. I want to meditate. I want to pray. I want to vibe with the elephants and the monkeys and the lions. So uh, Thailand, you, you might see me really in August. I want to go to Thailand, man, and just zen out for real, for real. And refocus and recharge and get ready to come back to the States, you know, 100%. Man, there it is. I got to get out there my damn self. But, bro. Yeah. It's so good to reconnect with you once everything is safe to open up and you've done your trip to Thailand, man. Make sure you come through to the Pandora office in Atlanta. Please, we please. We got to chop it up, you know, especially around the new music that you're putting out. We'll show you all the analytics since you're into that stuff and the, all the artist tools. And we just got to reconnect, bro. This has been a great conversation. Hey, man. J1, thank you for taking the time out. Again, I'm proud of your growth, you know. Uh, uh, Thanks, brother. I've watched everything, and um, when I when I heard I was doing an interview with you, I was like, "Damn!" Like he's really, really leveled up, and just from king to king, you know, that's why yes. I put it in my caption, "King Talk." I, I respect everything you do, everything you stand for, and continue to push the envelope, to push the culture forward, and to show that it's possible. You know what I'm saying? That's all we're here to do, man. It's to yes. inspire, to inspire. That's all we're here to do. So everything my, my, after bro. that is is extra credit. So thank you for having me and loaning to me your platform, King. Nah, I appreciate you. And likewise, man, if you're listening, make sure you head over to Pandora and listen to Sammy Radio. Yeah. You won't be disappointed, I promise. <laughs> Love, <laughs> my man. My man, we'll talk soon. Salute, man. Such is life, June 5th. Make sure y'all get the album. Yes, sir. Yes, Later. sir. Love.